Howdy everyone, Shamai Palb, and today I'm taking a look at a really nice handy lens for Sony's mirrorless E-mount cameras, the Sony 50mm f1.8 OSS. It will work on any Sony E-mount camera, but it only projects an APS-C sized image. So if you're using a full frame camera, it will automatically take you to crop shooting mode. But if you're using one of Sony's less expensive APS-C cameras, then it'll be perfect. So it's the full frame equivalent of a 75mm lens, good for portrait pictures and street photography, and the very wide maximum aperture of f1.8 means that you can get nicely out of focus backgrounds, even on an APS-C camera. Not to mention that the lens is letting in plenty of light at f1.8 for shooting indoors or in darker situations. Some major advantages of this lens having a smaller image circle is that it can be physically smaller, lighter, less expensive, and in this case, the lens also has image stabilization, which would be a lot harder to do on a full frame lens. It costs about £240 or $300 US dollars, which seems like good value for money, considering that image stabilization. Here is some footage with the stabilization turned off and now turned on. As you can see, while it's not holding the image as solid as a rock, it's still very effective, making this potentially a great lens for handheld video work or shooting in the dark. Now let's take a look at the lens itself. Well, it's small and simple. It has a metallic body, but it is still quite light, being just over 200 grams in weight. It comes in silver or black, it accepts small 49mm filters, and it has a metal lens mount, and it comes with a free lens hood, which is suitably deep for its field of view. The aperture mechanism has seven iris blades. The only control point on the lens is a focus ring, which turns very smoothly. It's electronically coupled to the autofocus motor. It works responsively enough in manual focus mode, although of course it's not as tactile to use as a directly connected focus system. The autofocus motor on this lens is silent in use, in stills or video work, but it's a little slow. In darker conditions or indoors, it can almost get painfully slow. However, as you can see here, when you're doing video work, the focus system can lock onto your subject very nicely. Overall, the lens may not exactly be a thing of beauty, but it's small and light and the electronics work pretty nicely. I particularly appreciate the image stabilization. Even if you're using external stabilization for video work, like a gimbal, image stabilization in the lens is still very helpful in smoothing out even that footage. Alright then, image quality. I'll be testing it on a 24 megapixel APS-C camera, my Sony A6300 with the inner camera corrections turned on. In the middle of the image, straight from f1.8, we see excellent sharpness, good contrast, and slightly cool colours. You can also see just a tiny bit of purple fringing if you look closely on contrasting edges. If we look over into the corners, wow, the sharpness remains very good. That's a lot better than you'd normally see for a 50mm lens on an APS-C camera. I was pleasantly surprised by this performance, I hadn't heard good things in other reviews. Well, stop down to f2.8 for an increase in contrast, a slight increase in sharpness, and a slight reduction in that purple fringing. If you stop the aperture down to f4 or f5.6, then image quality becomes ridiculously sharp from corner to corner. It's only when you stop down to about f11 that diffraction starts to kick in, and you'll see a slight reduction in sharpness but even then, it's clear that this 50mm lens is performing way above average. It's a very sharp optic. Alright, let's see about vignetting and distortion now on an APS-C camera. Here is an image without any of Sony's in-camera corrections. As you can see, there's almost no distortion, which is great, but with the aperture wide open at f1.8, the corners are a little bit dark. Stop down to f2.8 and that vignetting is effectively gone, so overall, I think it's a great performance for distortion and vignetting. 
The lens can focus as closely as 40 centimeters, a tiny bit closer than normal for a 50 millimeter lens. At f1.8, close up image quality is a little weak, something I've noticed before on Sony lenses and Fuji lenses too, actually. The image is soft with lots of longitudinal chromatic aberration, adding hostile colors everywhere. At f2.8, picture quality is somewhat improved. At f4, close up picture quality is finally very good. Let's see now how the lens works against bright light. This is normally a weak area for many 50mm lenses. The Sony lens performs okay here. There's some reduced contrast and tidbits of flaring, but nothing shockingly bad. And finally, bokeh. At f1.8, you can get a fairly deeply out of focus background, and I found the smoothness of those backgrounds to be a little bit hit and miss. The bokeh in them is mostly quite soft, although never really smooth. Occasionally though, just an edge of busyness begins to creep in, and you can also spot some green highlighting, a symptom of the lens's secret longitudinal chromatic aberration problem. Anyway, overall, we can only really praise the Sony 50mm f1.8 OSS. It's a very sharp lens with great image stabilization, very versatile and especially suitable for video work with low distortion and vignetting and otherwise good optics. Personally, to me, its images don't have a lot of character. As I mentioned before, the lens gives a slightly cool colour tint and there's something about its bokeh which I don't absolutely love and I've been doing photography long enough now to notice and be slightly fussy over picky things like longitudinal chromatic aberration. But really, I'm being a bit fussy there. It is a great lens which represents decent value for money and it could be an especially brilliant option for beginners. So it has to come highly recommended.